What's going on, everybody? It's your boy T Spill. Welcome to Spilling All the Team. This segment is called TV Smoothie. I'm going to be talking about the haves and the have nots and cutting it in the ATL. Let me say this I know it has been a while since I have done a TV smoothie. I know, right? <laughs> so, oh my god, it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. But for those of you who don't know what TV smoothie is, it's pretty much where I mostly do t uh, scripted uh, television shows that I like to watch. And I talk about the key points in them, but I'm gonna go ahead and just throw uh, cutting the ATL in there because there's only just a few things that I really want to talk about. And again, I'm not gonna get y'all play by play because that's not what this 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 is about. Imagine TV smoothie like you talking with your friend, you talking with your girl, talking with your boy. Be like, man, you remember this part in that show? Hell, you like that's all it is talking about points. I ain't sitting here. Mm -mm. And nobody got time for that. Yeah. On a 40. Drinking that 40. Okay, so the have and have nots. I don't remember what episode it is. It will be, well, the episodes for both will be in the tight two. But no, real talk, like, shit getting good. It shit getting good. You know. And I, I'm, you know, I gotta try to find this quote right quick, but Veronica, do not like her character. I do not, but weirdly enough, I'm starting to enjoy her character. And it's one of those where when you have an actor or actress who play a role so motherfucking well, that even though you hate that fucking character, you have such a respect for that character, that's this one. So, let me see. Uh -huh. Give me a second, John. I'm try. I'm trying to find this quote because I, I mean that was the fucking quote of the. Better yet, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna come back to her if I cannot find this quote. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. So. Y'all know why I was getting ready to spill the tea to Hannah. And, you know, of course, Veronica got to save her own shit. So she tell Hannah, oh, uh, Mrs. Cryer, uh, need you. I'll, uh, take care of Wyatt. And, you know, she starts, you know, dabbing him. He's getting out. Nah. And she asks, uh, Jim, did you beat his ass? N don't really need that. She was like, about time, literally. And, and just that whole, I don't know, it's so crazy. It's so crazy how that shit fucking played out. But, you know, Wyatt says that he gonna pretty much tell it all. And she goes, that's fucking ungrateful. Because there's no thing, so you just let me get away with murder. But uh, when he leaves, she turns to Jim and was like, it pretty much is about damn time that you beat his ass. The only thing is, what you fucked up at is you didn't beat his ass long enough. You need to beat him into submission so he don't pull this same hat trick, this same fuck shit again. And he pretty much, Jim was like, I'm tired. She was like, when is the devil too tired to raise here? I was like, you know what? Mm. Mm. That was the fucking quarter of the night, y'all. That was the quarter of the night. And even though I did not remember, remember it verbatim, y'all damn, y'all see I fucking found this shit. I was like, baby. Baby. So, you got that. What, what what else was good in the show? Now, we all know that, uh, damn it, what is that girl? Do you know what? I need to pull these damn character names because Candace. I'm still pulling the character because I swear I be forgetting names, y'all. But, ooh, Candace, no, she a bitch. But I love her. And even her getting ready to go to the funeral, you know, you have um, her mother telling her, like, do not do it. These people are mourning. Don't go. Now, the one thing that I didn't like is Hannah makes a whole lot of empty motherfucking threats and promises. The only thing that I will say, because she showed up to the funeral, she really didn't have to do shit. But when she showed, and now uh, Mrs. Cryer told her, you know what, 
you why don't you come on over you know to the I think I think we call this the repass that's what it's called but come on over to the repass here and Hannah sees her and she's working like she snatch her ass so I'm looking like about motherfucking time like I I'm just saying and now I, I bring myself into this shit a lot of time but I could never ever ever talk to my mother the way she talks to her mother and don't get the motherfucking taste out of my damn mouth don't give a fuck how old I am don't give a fuck how old she is you know what I'm saying but snatched her ass up you know and, and I was happy for that she needs to do that a little bit more often you feel me okay let's see what what, what else what else is good uh so is, is her name wait 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 is her name Selena Celine she a delusional hoe she a hoe nonetheless but she a delusional hoe my whole thing is just let it go just let just let it go that's all I gotta say about her delusional Now Jeffrey, he and Landon ain't working out right now. And at the repass, Landon sees those two talking to each other. And you know, after Wyatt walks out, Landon comes in just talking mad shit. He was like the whole entire time, I thought you kept saying, why, why? But you were actually saying, why and it was getting Jeffrey to the point where he pretty much just like you know fuck you this and third but his whole thing is you ain't feel that way last night I'm just like you know what it's too much happening this motherfucking episode but I'm getting my fucking life like for real and <clears throat> Maggie ooh, I'ma say that she 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 won't hurt some David she 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 won't David she she won't the Django without the Django okay she she won't David and um, did hire a motherfucking PI to you know uh, watch Veronica, and she got the pictures of her and Benny. But she she was about to spill the tea, but she didn't. But she because you know she was throwing stuff out there. You know, David whole thing is see you don't drop hints, you drop bombs. What are you holding back? And all she pretty much said is you know pretty much hinted towards his vehicle does he know where it's at and in that sense he might want to try to find it and then him finding he will find the answers but my thing is that would have been the per see here's the thing and I understand the show they're going to drag certain shit out that would have been the see, see what I would have done role reversal so if I had you know a little chickadee that I want and you know pimping on that fuck shit Try to come for me. We got my whole thing is this: smoke mirrors, put your ass on display, and I would have been like, "See this? Psst, read them and weep in front of her motherfucking body." But she's not gonna do that only because she has to protect the campaign, and I got that. But still, I would have been like, "Fuck the campaign!" I would have went out in the blaze of motherfucking glory in that bitch. Who? What else? What else? I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to. See if there's anything else before I get to my motherfucking MVP of the motherfucking night. Is there anybody else that I need to... Okay, yep, time to talk about the MVP. Motherfucking Catherine. Now, I wish I would have done reviews on this a while back. And I'm not going to lie, when the shit first started, I, like, I did not start watching it until the beginning of this season. And I saw it coming... Uh, I saw it, I was like, well, let me go all the way back. And had it not been for it already being on third season, I probably would have lost interest because it just wasn't holding me. But child, when Catherine motherfucking drug Celine ass in the motherfucking house, man, I was here for that shit. Cause I didn't see that shit come. But she did my motherfucking MVP. Because she, here's her thing, she knew her position. She played her position. She didn't necessarily agree with it, but at the same time, her playing her position, damn it, she got hers on her side too. But when it came to Candace, she handled Candace personally. Didn't even let Jim do it. So why they at the repass invite her into his study? You know, talk. Um, Jim gives her a drink. She like, well, you know, I'm not gonna drink this because she 
Fizz, they might have poisoned her. He takes a nice gulp out of it. And then, you know, Captain asks her, what did you do to my daughter? Pretty much insinuating that it's because of you that my daughter's dead. And, you know, can like, I'm not finna, you know, just take responsibility for that shit, you know what I'm saying? And pretty much just getting ready to leave, Matt child, when I tell y'all Captain grabbed a motherfucking bottle, it might have been wild, I don't know what the fuck it was, but boom! Shot that shit on her motherfucking head. She fell on the motherfucking couch, looked and walked the fuck out. I was like, ooh! And if I'm not mistaken, Jim finished the drink, got up, and walked the fuck out. I was like, you know what? That's right. Catherine's the motherfucking MVP of the motherfucking night. Y'all let me know what was y'all favorite parts. Because I know I miss a whole lot, but again, I'm just giving y'all talking points. It's my TV smoothing, okay? Taking the best parts of the fruit and the vegetables, throwing in the blender. We're going to blend this shit up. So now, cutting it in the ATL. I just got a couple things I want to talk about. Just a couple. And I don't, I mean, I, I, I read, I really don't. I fuck, I guess I'll just do a character analysis. So, Maya is a fucking pill popper. Maya is an individual who has issues, but instead of dealing with her issues head on, she decides to sedate herself. She decides to take, you know, pharmaceuticals. So she's one of those where, you know, and here's the thing, what's gonna happen when the med when the Medicaid shit runs out? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What then? You can only run from your problems for so long. And what's so funny is, you know, and I know from experience, when you try to run from your problem, you try to disguise, you try to not see it, you're not growing at all, but your problems are constantly growing. And there's going to come that point in time where you cannot overlook your problems anymore. You cannot run from your problems anymore. You're going to have to face it. And you better hope you're strong enough to deal with them. Because again, while you sit here not growing, your problems are growing, you know, they're growing tall. So imagine you a little ass rabbit and your problems is a motherfucker, you know, grizzly bear. But y'all are the same fucking size, but you you stay stagnant. But your problems grew. That's how I look at Maya. And again, I guess she's all about her Benjamins and shit, but it is what the fuck it is. My whole thing is, but if you as big of a boss bitch as you say you are, you wouldn't be sweating a bit. You wouldn't be sweating in for business. Got I understand it's a show. And of course, turnings have to intertwine, but you can make your money elsewhere. My whole thing is this. Why are you so concerned about Miss Deidre? There's another motherfucker in the midst that your ass should be worried about. But let me go ahead and talk about Miss Deidre. I, here's the thing. I like Deidre, but it's mostly because she's misunderstood. As am I. Deidre has issues. Her issues stimulate from her childhood. The reality is we all have issues that stem from our childhood or issues that stem from other relationships that we may not necessarily have dealt with or taking the time to sit back, reflect and figure out like, oh my gosh, it's because of this that I react this way. But Deidre is for real, for real. Yeah, she gonna turn up. But a lot of the times she done turned up, she done warned everybody. Don't do it. Don't do it. And when she drug, I don't know what it is about people getting dragged that just just makes me feel good. But y'all know I like my ratchet television, all forms of it, from the from the gospel ratchet to the Persian ratchet to the Italian ratchet, all types of ratchet. I love Miss Ratchet now. But drug that girl across that motherfucking table onto the floor. I was I was oh got my life then. Now on this episode. You know, she decided to put this girl mug shot on a motherfucking birthday cake, Maya, now, and then take it, take it, and it got presented. Man, what I tell you, that's one of those where was it dirty? Yes. Was it grimy? Yes. Was it messy? Yes. Was I here for you? Best believe I was. But my whole thing is this if you gonna be messy, be messy. You know, stand firm in your shit. Because here's the funny thing. Why everybody want to sit here and come against Deidre. Deidre is doing all this shit to y'all fucking faces. Right? But you have Beauty sending the spy over to Maya's establishment to spy. But she had no intentions of ever bringing that up. You have LaKenya sitting here flip-flopping and playing sides behind the scenes. But not sitting here revealing it to Deidre of all people these are all the moves that I have been making but you ain't loyal to no motherfucking body 
you have, well, I mean, Maya is just Maya. She ain't shit. And then you have the biggest culprit, Mushia, who then sat here, infiltrated, and played all your asses to learn what she need to learn. Pretty much put, uh, you know, Kenya, but did it way better and about to sit here and, you know, drop her bomb of hair. But it's one of those where it's just like, you know, hate Deidre for all, hate her out as much as you want. But it's one of those where I like Deidre. And it's most because I guess I can relate to her because of some of the shit that I went through. Done with her, like I said, La Kenya, she ain't shit but a motherfucking flip flop machine, wherever shit, bitch ain't loyal. Really ain't much else I gotta say to her. All I'm gonna say is this while she's sitting here trying to flip flop or whatnot, she best hope that, regardless of whether they have a season or not, she best hope Deidre, like she moves to a point where she don't see Deidre. Cause when Deidre watch this shit back, I feel for that ass. So I gotta say about that. Beauty, beauty messy, tacky. Don't know how you a salon on in your head. It's always fucked up. I, I know I don't wanna talk, but hell, my shit natural. It what the fuck it is. Rock it how I wanna rock it, but I'm just saying. And um, yeah, she she ratcheted the shit. And Mushia, the only thing I, I it's one of those where it's like she's a bully. Regardless of what you wanna call her, she is a bully. I'm all about being firm, I'm all about being self-assured, I'm all about knowing your worth, I'm all about being confident. But I'm not against degrading somebody or making somebody seem inferior to make yourself seem superior. I'm not for that. I don't like that. And you see that a lot that she even tried to do that shit, pull that shit on LaKenya. Even though I don't like her, but she should have sat there and, and got that ass together and read that ass to feel, but she didn't do it. But again, you want to say and try to be because you want to see him be a big girl. Should have been learned from from Deidre, but you want to say and learn from Maya, passive aggressive ass shit. But it is what the fuck it is. But like I said, my MVP of the motherfucking night was motherfucking Deidre. Cause it was one of those where, not mind you, yes, did it take a lot of energy for her to do what she did and all those other stuff? Yes. But again, we cannot sit here and not say that all the other females have not taken time to do other fuck shit to other people on this damn show. That's all I'm going to say. So you guys, you guys also let me know what your favorite parts of uh, Cutting in ATL were for this particular episode. Next week is the season finale. And um, if you guys don't know, I'm in the process of working on a brand new segment called T. And trending topics with the tea. Because everything has to have tea. And if it was, we're right. And again, this is me talking about news, trending topics, what's on the blogs, in the tabloids, what's in the news, but things that, you know, hit home with me and that I can put my own little spin on and deliver it to you guys. So if you guys know of anything that you guys would like for me to talk about, please send it to me on Instagram or Twitter or even email it to me. And if if I if I feel that I could, you know, flow with it go ahead and do a video about it or even incorporate it into the mass video so please with this video rate comment and subscribe i think i might end up bringing tv smoothie back especially with my announcement if you guys have not seen the announcement yet i will leave the e-car up here and then you'll know why so i love you guys and i will see you guys on the next video peace